I'm suggesting there's all they are simply, mathematically even, they're, they're just at a point way lower than the potential that they could have attained in life. They came into this world, you know, a baby crying and screaming, you know, is reaching, you know, is grasping for, for, for things, and this is where they ended up. No one aspired to do that, but it's about wasting potential, and this is where they ended up. And I, I'm afraid I see so many young people today, healthy young people, healthy-minded young people, but on a road to nowhere because their potential is slipping away every day decisions that they're making. And, and so as many of you, as you know, you know, I've had this afro now since Memorial Day. And, and it's been for me like a statement, a statement just that we as African Americans need to begin to fall back in love with ourselves, okay? And, and I've been met with a lot of negativity, even from the beginning, is because because nobody wants to deal with this, you know. But but there, there is a reality when you walk around the neighborhoods. You look and you have to admit that we are jacked up in our communities. Our neighborhoods are all screwed up, and we have to understand that the, the most basic human trait is, is survival. And so, like in peacetime, it would equate to to happiness, to to satisfaction, to fulfillment. And, and then we look at our lives and we recognize how destructive we have been in our own lives. How, how anti-self-preservation how, how anti, uh, self, self -preservation that we've been. We, we look at our lives uh, in, in financially we're jacked up. We look at our lives relationally we're jacked up. We look at our lives spiritually we're jacked up. Physically we're jacked up. Well, think about that. Our money isn't right. Our relationships aren't right. Our, 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 our health isn't right any good. Our spiritual lives are all jacked up. So every aspect of our life is jacked up. It's, it's destructive. It's in the toilet. And, and the most basic human trait is to be well. So, so I'm saying then why aren't we well? Why do we sabotage every aspect of our lives that have a possibility, have a potential to be something great? Because we're sick. Okay, and so this Afro thing to me was almost like almost like a doctor, like a diagnosis. It was my diagnosis, something I saw one day when this young girl's mother, you know, washed her hair and couldn't get it fixed quite right, and the hairstylist she was out of town, and, and the mother was like, "Oh, I can't take my daughter with me when I'm going here or there because her hair doesn't look right." African American. That light bulb went off. That, that we have a big problem with who we are. I mean, the, as, as African Americans, we have two unique physical traits. Primarily, that's the color of our skin and the texture of our hair, and we spend our time running away from both of those. And we, we can't do much about the color of our skin, but we do find ourselves how we respond to other people based on the color of their skin. We've known this even in our community for years and years and years. But then we look at the other physical trait that we have. It's our hair, the, the coarseness of our hair, the texture of our hair. So what do we do? We find it especially in women because they're more able to do this because it's acceptable among women. But as far as just, just uh, pasting straight hair, weaving straight hair, wearing wigs, whatever. Sort of, sort of uh, trying to disguise our own hair, the physical traits that we have been born with. And, and taping and gluing and weaving in white folks' hair to our heads. Now, what does that speak to? Now, just say you weren't an African American. Say you didn't have anything to do with African or Americans at all. And maybe you were just a, an observer just looking at this thing and you're watching this individual that has particular unique physical traits and everyone else. But, but they cut their own unique physical human traits and take the physical traits of someone else, of people totally different, and glue it and stick it to their own heads as if that was theirs. And, and they believe that it looks better. And so why would they believe that it looks better? What I'm telling you is there's a sickness. There's an internal sickness in the minds and the hearts of African Americans that we, we have a self-loathing. We loathe ourselves, who we are. And again, it is because of the, of the hundreds of years in this nation of oppression, of prejudice, of racism, of all the things that, that we've gone through. It's sort of created this negative negativity in our minds about ourselves. I mean, as much as we might look at, at say, historically, and, and the Africans uh, and African Americans being oppressed by, by white folks in this nation, deep, deep inside, come on now, you, you'd rather be them than you. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't rather be the oppressor than the oppressed? I see it in the neighborhoods all the time. I see these young kids, these young gangs of, of children, 8, 9, 10, 15 of them going down the street wreaking havoc, causing trouble. 
There's only a very small percentage of those young people that are truly bad. But when you have a group of young people, of maybe 15 young people, and maybe one or two people in that group is bad, the rest of them, the other 13 of them, they, they, it's not that they're bad. They simply don't want to be the one who's ostracized. They want to be part of the group. They, they may hate, they may loathe the things that this group is doing and that they're participating in, but they would rather be part of the group than that person on the outside, the person being persecuted by the group. And they'll even harm an individual. And they hate harming the individual, but they'd rather harm that individual than take the chance of being the one being harmed by the group. And that individual being harmed, possibly, would rather switch places with one of the, his oppressors, with one of the, his tormentors. And even participating in tormenting someone else if it would mean that he wouldn't have to be the victim any longer, you see. And so I'm suggesting here in this nation, hundreds and hundreds of years of that, as African Americans, we have come to the point uh, of sort of, of not really hating our oppressors so much, but, but envying our oppressors. And, and on a subconscious level, wanting to be like our oppressor. And, and, and this, is, this is sort of what we've, what we've done. They say that even in the in the days of the slaves, that you know the, the, the term cracker was was the person who who cracked the whip. He was the cracker. That's where that term came from. And, and you know what they would do is that some at times they would take certain of the Africans and and give them a little bit of authority, and they would be the crackers. They would be the ones whipping the other Africans. And, and it's been said, it's been noted over years uh, that that the that the, the the black cracker cracked that whip harder than the white cracker. Think about that. Think about that. Deep inside, there's this thing called the, the Stockholm Syndrome. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. There was a bank robbery years ago in Stockholm, Sweden. And, and, and the, 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 the robbers took hostage some of the employees and some of the patrons of that particular bank. And, and they had them held hostage for a time. And when the standoff was over, when the, whole, when the whole thing was over, it turned out that the people that were hostages had grown sort of an affinity, a like, a concern for the welfare, for the well-being of the hostage takers. They kind of liked them. And, and, and shrinks have called it the Stockholm Syndrome. It's kind of how, how the, the oppressed begin to, to grow a sort of an affinity toward those that are oppressing them. And I'm afraid in this nation we have done that as well. I mean, when you take African Americans in this nation and you've convinced African Americans that you look better with straight hair, with, with better with white folks' hair glued, taped, or weaved to your head rather than your own hair, there's a problem. So the problem is not that, well, we say, well, you know, well, it does look a little better. My, the question is, why does it look better? Why do you think it looks better? So this is on a subconscious level. Why have we been convinced on a less than conscious level that if you take a white person's hair and stick it to our heads, we look better? Okay? Well, well we do, do we? The, does, is an anorexic really that heavy? And just so you take a person, so from a psychological point of view, maybe different, just so we can step outside of the personal uh, feeling that we're getting here with this conversation, look at an anorexic. What they say is an anorexic, when they look in the mirror, they see a person who's overweight. They see a person who needs to lose weight. And, and so they don't eat and they stop eating. So, and, and they get, you've seen anorexic, how skinny and terribly skinny and, and emaciated they are. But, but subconsciously, and, and, and when they're looking through their conscious eyes, they're seeing somebody that needs to lose weight. So it's not about, as, as African Americans, we believe, oh, well, we do look better with straight hair. What I'm saying is, why do you believe you look better with straight hair? Why does the anorexic believe that she needs to lose some weight? That's what we're talking about today. So I'm saying there's a, very, there's a deep, deep subconscious ill that we have as African Americans today, and we need to just begin to recognize it. And, and this has been the point of this afro. Yeah, I was out talking to my, my wife's aunt. She said, well, how are you going to grow that? You know, I'm about through. It's going to be about 1 January, and I'm going to cut it. I was about ready to cut it about a month ago. You know, I was, uh, my daughter loves my hair. She's five years old. See, see, about a year or so ago, and from about a year ago up until, you know, a couple, and, and, and a few months into it, at nighttime, you know, I tell her stories, bedtime stories, Bible stories, you know, just stories, stories, you know, to put her to sleep and all. 
And, and when I got the idea of going to get my old high school yearbook, you know, from 1976 when I was a senior. I had this big old afro, you know, and she really loved it. And, and I said, you know, I'm thinking about growing an afro. It was around that Memorial Day when that stuff went down, you know, about, the, you know, that light bulb went off about African Americans and the hair thing. And, and she was like, oh, great, Daddy. Yeah, you know, that will be wonderful. And I said, no, I know it's wonderful, but let me tell you why. And I went and I broke it down. The same, the same, uh, the same answer, the same uh, explanation that I just gave you is what I gave to her, except more on a child level. I just broke it down, and, and so she understood, and she got it. So she's been kind of proud of her dad. You know, her dad wearing this afro, wearing this afro, because to a kid, sometimes you know we make statements and we make decisions and we make determinations and we explain it to our kids, and our our kids are like mesmerized. Our kids like are idolizing us, and, and they think it's a great thing. And so I felt, you know, more recently, you know, I think I've proven the point, and I've talked to so many people, probably maybe a hundred folks or so, individual, one-on-one, -on -one, talking about this thing. And so I was ready, you know, just go ahead and cut my hair, you know. And I went, I told my daughter, you know, and this is about a month or so ago, or a little less than a month ago. I said, you know, uh, Daddy's getting ready to cut his hair, okay? And I thought she might be a part of it, help me out a little bit, you know. And she goes, okay. She, she just nodded her head, but her eyes started tearing up. And man, I, I didn't realize that she had gotten it so much that, that she was proud of her daddy. That he was making this stand and, and she, her eyes were starting to tear up, man. I'm like, okay, no, 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 Dad, daddy's not going to cut it. I couldn't go there, man. My, <laughs> my little girl's eyes were tight. Now, now, my wife was in the room, you know, and she was kind of behind my daughter. My wife's been wanting me to cut my hair for a while now. And, uh, and my wife was looking at me like, no, I want you to cut your hair. And she doesn't. Now you're not going to cut it. because. But man, my, if you see my little girl's eyes... And it like ripped my heart out. No, Daddy's not going to do it. And then I talked to her. I talked to her a little bit later that day. I said, you know, eventually Daddy's going to have to cut his hair right. She goes, you? I said, uh, I said, I'll tell you what, how about next year? You know, January 1st of next year. <laughs> okay, next year. And so we've been making a little thing out of it. And, uh, but, but she got it. And you know what, what, I've, I, what else is interesting is, is white folks. I've talked to a lot of white folks about this, and they get it too. But, but see, African Americans, black folks, we have a hard time because we have these, this defense, this big shell put up there because we don't want to deal with this thing. We don't want to deal with the realities of our lives, but the reality is, let me ask you, you ask yourself, how is your situation? And, and all I'm suggesting is, and all, it's just my diagnosis, is that, that recognize, again, that the, the primary the, 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 of, of, uh, trait of human beings, of every animal, actually, is survival. And, and a survival today, in base time, again, would equate to, to wellness, to satisfaction, to happiness. And, and so I'm saying is just look at your life. Is your health right? Are your finances right? Are your relationships right? Do you really feel that you're right spiritually? And if you'll be, be honest, most, most Americans, but most African Americans will say, no, you know it's not true. You know your finances are jacked up, or you know your health isn't quite right. You know you're not in the right place you need to be spiritually, and your relationship's all messed up. So why is this? When, when we're not being pressed with prison, we're not being pressed with torture, we're not being pressed with all kinds of afflictions and ills that, that beset people in other nations all around this globe. We have it relatively easy, then why are we failing so? And I'm suggesting as African Americans we have inner issues. And our particular unique issue as African Americans is we don't really love ourselves. And you know, you ask somebody, you know, do you, you know, you love you, yeah, yeah, I love myself, man. You know, we go there, but we don't. Because how do you treat someone that you love? You, you do the best for them. You make sure that they got what they need, that they're eating right. You make sure that they got enough money in their pocket. You make sure that their relationships are okay. You make sure that everything, you got to ride to church. You make sure that everything is okay in the life of an individual that you really love. Right? Right. So, so do you love yourself? And, and if you loved yourself, then you'd be treating yourself right. You'd be doing yourself right. You'd be eating right. When you know that this food that you're eating is going to harm you, you wouldn't eat it because you love you. You'd know that just smoke taken into your system isn't going to be good for you, so you wouldn't do it because you love you. You know you need to have money for your retirement, for your future. So instead of blowing it on the number or blowing it here, you'd be putting it in the bank or putting it to the investor because you love you. So, so we don't love ourselves. 
then it's almost like a mathematical equation because we want to believe right off the bat that we love ourselves, but we don't. So sometimes you have to look at the result and recognize if this result isn't what it's supposed to be, there's something wrong with the equation 